Jimbo Fisher was named head football coach at Texas A&M in December of 2017. He's still looking to bring the Aggies to a national championship just like he did in 2013 with Florida State. Last season, Texas A&M finished with their highest final ranking, number four, since winning the national championship all the way back in 1939 and finishing number one in the nation. Now, Fisher's 26 and 10 record and fourth ranked finish at A&M is already impressive. And A&M maintained most of their offensive skill players from last season, but they lost their quarterback in Kellen Bond and four starting offensive linemen. So what is the latest with the Aggies? Our Dennis Dodd is with head coach Jimbo Fisher. Well, Jimbo, first things first, this breaking news, Texas and Oklahoma, there's talk <laughs> that they want to get in the SEC. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but but what are your thoughts? Hey, you know, I don't really have any. I mean, I'm sure they would get in. It's the best leg in ball, but, you know, they're in a great leg and doing their things. And there's other teams you got to consider after. You can't just take two teams and leave the other. So I think there's a lot there that it's got to be sorted out. But, you know, we're happy in the SEC. And, you know, that's, if they want to try to get in, I guess they can. Yeah, it's funny how those things break during SEC media day. Yeah, isn't right? that amazing? <laughs> and I have to ask you this because you and I go way back when you were a quarterback at Sanford mm -hmm. University here in Birmingham. And Coach Bowden was also an All-American quarterback right. at Howard University. That's when I got to know the Bowdens really well, yep. got to know you. And now Coach Bowden is in poor health. Your, your thoughts on that? I just talked to him, like I said, three weeks ago. And it just breaks my heart because he had said, he, you know, right I'm keeping up with you. I got the Houston paper. I'm keeping this. I'm doing that. And you're doing good. And we were talking about the old – we're talking about Sanford days, having the Bowden Academy here in the summer, sitting out back and having to chew and by the pool and kicking right. our feet up and talking and staying up in the – in the dorms at Sanford, how, how normal a guy he was. And I can't explain how much that family and how much he meant to my career and being able to be a part of them at such an early age and learn how to coach and learn how to be around the guys and what to do and how to do it. And I don't think anybody has ever done it with more class and dignity on the sideline and, and had the amount of success he's had in college football history. And it breaks my heart how sad he was, but we were just reminiscing about good days. It's funny, he said, he said, you know, he said, I feel good, but he said, I just don't have the energy and quite the zip I had, and then this diagnosis come out. But hopefully I'll get to talk to him again. I'm gonna try and get a hold of him tomorrow and what we did, and I got it set up to where we're gonna get a call. So, but just, my, first thing I think of him, the memories and the smiles and what he meant for me mm -hmm. at early age, but then, man, he, man, he's 91 years old, and what he's meant to the coaches he's coached and the players he coached, it, it's amazing the impact he's had in this world. Yeah, a great man, a spiritual guy oh. who's in a good place right now. Like you said, I'm happy, and yeah. I'll put it this way. If anybody can go, can go meet with the man, he, he, he can do it because he, he lived his whole life that way and was very proud of it and was very outspoken on it about his Christianity and I think had a huge impact on a lot of people. Mm. And, and lastly, when you were at Florida State with him, mm -hmm. I mean, that was a transition that got a lot of publicity, but it really was, you guys are close. Oh, we're very close. Yeah. We've always been close. We've, we've stayed and <clears throat> talked when I left, when I was there, and people said, well, he didn't come around. You know what he always said? He told me this back when we were at Sanford. Buddy, whenever I retire, I'm not going to hang around and be that coach because he said it happened to him a couple times. And the old coach hangs around, and he said he did it on purpose, but we would call and talk. I talked with Terry, talked with Jeff, talked with Tommy, but I still talk with Coach Bowden I, I, since I've been at A&M. He's called people and bragged about me out there that I had no idea, mm -hmm. and then I've called him to check on him and keep up with him, and there's no one in the world I have more respect for, and we're very, very close. Mm -hmm. Well said. All right, let's talk about this Texas A&M Aggies team. Mm -hmm. uh, top five finish a year ago, mm -hmm. I and mean, you've been recruiting like crazy. You're stockpiling good players. Yep. I mean, the program is really in a strong position right now. We are, and, we, and now we have to take those final steps, and, you know, and, and part of those final steps is learning to play at that. And, and everybody marks you on the calendar now. They say, okay, we play A&M. So can we match that standard? And here's what we got to learn. It's not about who we play, whether it's Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Te Arkansas, Mississippi State. It's about our standard. Do we meet the standard each and every day? Do we not let our opponent affect how we play or who we play? We just play to our standard each and every day. And that's what great teams do. And when people are putting you that X on you, mm -hmm. that's the way you got to do it. And then there's still steps we have to take. We're, listen, we're three spots short of where I want to be. We're four. We want to be one. Mm -hmm. And to get there, there's standards above us that are very high. And we're going to have to meet them. We're going to have to play at it. But if we don't understand how to go about that, where the pressure and expectations don't bother us, and we do that by having great preparation mentally and physically every day and creating those championship habits. So when, when those big moments come, we, your habits are coming straight to the surface, who you are. So when we can practice that way, then we can deal with those moments. And I'm anxious to watch our team hopefully take those steps of going up there and addressing all the challenges of the people trying to come after us. 
And Jimbo, it's an interesting year in the conference as far as quarterbacks because yep. so many schools are breaking in new a lot guys, of new ones. including mm -hmm. you. Exactly right. Uh, uh, so, so where's the quarterback spot right well, now? Well, I think we got two guys right now in that room with Haynes King and Zach Calzada who are outstanding. People say, well, if you got two, you don't have one. That's not true. We have two guys that are battling. I've, I've learned that you don't pick a guy in the spring. I don't care how great he's played. You got to learn, because I've had guys play great in the spring, come and fall, all of a sudden they get the deer in the headlights look, you know what I mean? <laughs> so let's just make sure we handle that, let, let it work out. But we have two guys who are very capable mentally, physically, psychologically, and I'm very, I'm, I think both are NFL guys, I really do. And so we'll just wait and see how that plays out with Haynes King and Zach Calzada. In championship teams, you have to have that offensive line. And yes. a year ago, your offensive line was incredible as yes, far as you gave up the least amount of sacks. I think exactly. of anybody in the conference. We do. We Third did. down in conversions, you were incredible. We were second in the country. So, so now you're replacing four guys. Mm -hmm. Well, that? here's the thing. We got the one we did keep is the first team All-American. So that's a good. He's, one. he's pretty good. Yeah. Now Luke Matthews, our center, who was hurt last year, but he had played some ball, so he's a center who's very knowledgeable, feel very good. We got a transfer in Jameer Johnson from Tennessee, who was a starter for eight games at Tennessee. He's going to hopefully be one of the tackles. So you got those three positions there. The two guards, Layden Robinson, played a lot last year. One of the most physically strong guys I've ever coached in my entire life. Very gifted. Aki's the other guy, our young redshirt freshman, who's as gifted as anybody I've ever coached. Now, those are, we may, we're probably more talented, but now you got to have that history. I mean, that uh, leadership, and you got to have that uh, experience to be able to get that together and how quick they can get together. But, the, but listen, I would rather coach guys that are really, really gifted to be able to get there. And I think we will. And it's just a matter of time how quick we can get there. And we've been talking to all the coaches, the Western Division. It is interesting. Alabama's Alabama. Yep. You guys are right there. LSU thinks they're going to have a great year. I, listen, they're very – that's the thing okay. here. We talk about Alabama all we want. That's playing them. Well, oh, LSU will beat you. Auburn will beat you. Mississippi <laughs> right. will beat you. That's the thing this league does. And, but, you know, each and every guy, even though you may have experience, everybody's got talent. Everybody in this league's got – look at the draft. Right. I mean, you may be five and five and have six guys drafting. You're going, but the other teams in there have nine. So I mean, it's just it humbles you quickly. And the largest stadium in the in the Southeastern Conference, I think Kyle Field is bigger than the one in Knoxville. I it's believe close, it is. Yeah, but, but it's going to be full. Is oh, it's full every time. It's 105,000. They're supposedly there, so they get about 110 in there. You know how they <laughs> cram it in. Everything's bigger in Texas. Sure, That's why sure. they claim it. But but it does, and, and it's an atmosphere and environment that is as good as anywhere in the country. Mm. And lastly. And you mentioned it in your comments to the big room, the NIL situation. I mean, where you're located in Texas and in the state of Texas. I mean, you're Dallas, Houston, the state. Of, seems like that would benefit kids. It does. It's a huge advantage because of the corporate opportunities for those kids, the, the sponsorships, the things they're getting. And a bunch of our kids, I haven't said it like Nick, but a bunch of our guys are getting some really good deals. And I know that they say they're getting. I'm not part of it. So, But you're right there in that state. And financially, that state of Texas is second to none of anywhere in the country. And you're right between those two big cities. And the importance and, and the resources those people have and it's, it's a very good situation for us. Will that help in recruiting? I don't think there's no doubt. I think eventually that's where it's going to go to. Hmm. Are you excited about that or is that going to be a... Well, I mean, listen, we don't know what the ramifications of all that is. I, it's too early to tell. But like I said before, a lot of people have been doing name, image, and likeness ain't told nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's legal, so we're all in the same boat, so I don't mind it. <laughs> Jim, Jimbo, thanks. Great to see you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Jimbo Fisher going to do what he can do for Texas A&M. Looking at the odds to win the SEC, A&M right behind Bama and Georgia, plus 900. Jimbo Fisher going to do everything in his power to get this team back to number one. Texas A&M finishing with their highest final ranking at number four last season. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.